Good morning. I'm Mark Hauer, Provost and CEO of Antioch University of Los Angeles. Welcome to the 2020 commencement ceremony. This is our first ever virtual ceremony, made necessary by the coronavirus health crisis. It is only one of several challenges we face as a society and a planet right now. In times such as these, it is all the more important that we celebrate your accomplishments and remind ourselves of our strengths and commitment to social change. This ceremony is being conducted on our campus. And when here, we have a tradition of reading a land acknowledgement to remember our role and place in a larger story. Antioch University of Los Angeles resides on the traditional and unceded territory of the Tongva people. These lands and the Tongva people continue to carry the stories of this nation and the people's struggles for survival and identity. With this land acknowledgement, we take a step toward learning these stories and identifying ways to join in decolonial and indigenous movements for sovereignty and self-determination. Again, thank you all for joining us today to recognize and celebrate the accomplishments of our graduating students. Honored students, congratulations. You have worked hard for this day. Your sacrifices have allowed you to re realize your goals. I am delighted to acknowledge your achievements and to welcome you into the community of Antioch alumni. While we celebrate your achievements, it is also true that the success of individual students rests on the support of others. Let us take a moment to acknowledge those who have helped you and in, in your success. Family and friends, we know that without you, the graduates would likely not have reached this point. Your assistance, support, and love has been critical for their success. Family members and friends who have supported, encouraged, and maybe even pushed these candidates a little, I know that I speak for all the student candidates when I say, thank you for all you have done. Faculty, the faculty have of course been a big part of your learning journey. They have built the curriculum, shared their expertise, and encouraged you to do and be your best. The faculty are in the Zoom room right at this moment. Faculty, please be recognized. <laughs> staff and administrators, I also want to take a moment to address the significance of this day for staff, administrators, and all who work at Antioch. Commencement for us is a powerful reminder of why we do this work. Finally, I want to recognize the essential contribution of Sandy Lee, our Chief Operating Officer, whose careful planning and coordination of this event makes it possible every year. It was particularly challenging this year, I have no doubt, given some of the constraints. And I want to thank the committee. They really pitch in and make it easier for everyone. The committee consists of Andrea Richards, Susan Nero, Lauren Moran, Cole Ellis, Francis Hernandez, and Emily Deverselli. Now, let's begin with our first speaker. First on our list of celebrations is a celebration of the Bridge Program. An important part of an AULA education is the connection be made between quality education and values rooted in social justice. Since 1999, the Division of Undergraduate Studies has been living those values through the Bridge Program, which provides free humanities education and experiential learning for adults looking for a bridge to higher education. I'd like to welcome and introduce the co-director of the Bridge Program, Russell Thornhill. Thank you, Dr. Hauer. Greetings to you all. I am honored to introduce the Bridge Program speaker for the class of 2020. Today, we celebrate the accomplishments of the Bridge students on this 20th anniversary of the Bridge Program. During these times of protests and unrest, we speak the words, Black Lives Matter. Our next speaker, Sharnice Crenshaw, came to the Bridge Program last October. Over the past nine months, Sharnice has been a vital part of the Bridge community. Sharnice is now enrolled in Santa Monica Community College to continue her studies in the fall with the goal of becoming an activist and an advocate for youth. Please join me in welcoming Sharnice Crenshaw. Good morning, everyone. 
My name is Sharnice Crenshaw. You know, I just want to say thank you to self first and foremost. And I'll tell you all why in a second. But let me give a huge congratulations to my fellow Bridge Completion class slash newfound family and all the graduates of 2020. We did it, you guys. Amongst everything that each and every one of us has endured this year, and for some like myself, even before 2020 began, we all had one thing in mind, and that was to make today no matter what was thrown our way. For that, I am ever so proud of myself and every last one of the students here today. It ain't over until he says it's over. I had to make that statement because there has been so many times that I've literally said to myself it's over, not knowing what type of strength he has placed in me with every battle I came across. I'm sure I'm not the only one today who definitely can say this. I just wanna let you guys know that I totally never seen this day coming. It wasn't until three years ago, my dreaming of days I'll be able to accomplish my educational goals that I felt were ripped from me for various reasons came to an end. I used to cry almost every year during prom and graduation time because I knew time wasn't waiting for me and I just felt like my goals were impossible. I felt like I was never going to be able to say I had a high school diploma. Yes, I had a career already, but what was I gonna look like trying to become a youth activist without education of my own behind it? Until one day, I just said, forget that. I'm gonna make it possible. But let me tell you, those were not my exact words. But yet, they were the words within the universe at that time, so I listened and made it happen. It took me two years to get my high school diploma. Even taking six months off due to depression and other things, I did it. Within that time, I had heard about this program through my teacher, but this program just wasn't sounding timely for me, so I put that thought aside until the week after I graduated with my high school diploma. I really didn't know what made me apply, but something told me to do it, and I did it. Miss KP was one of the first people to experience my crazy via phone. This is one of the most peaceful, calmest woman I've ever met in my life. I explained to her that I was not going to be able to write anything more than a five paragraph essay in her writing class. And of course she hit me with, well, you know, in my class, we will have a 10 page paper to write. In my mind, I'm like, Sharnice, you're just on the phone. You have never met this lady. You can graciously hang up now. Of course I didn't though. I couldn't even get a five paragraph essay completed how I wanted to. So I was gonna need everyone and their angels at the school to help me. I had no idea that the length of my papers was just gonna be the least of my worries. I can say with every paper I turned in, I became more aware and happy with what this program brought out of me. I also became more certain that I had more run on sentences than the person actually, than a person actually on the run. Fast forward, you guys, I have turned in a 15 page final. Hell yeah. I overcame every fear and, and every challenge when it came to writing within this program. I was shown how to turn my truths into stories and use my weaknesses as my strengths to overcome kind of what we all had to do in these past months as we faced one of the biggest burdens in history, the COVID-19 pandemic. Then turn around and see the acts of racism and injustice to the black community be televised and tried as if it was just another bump in the road. Things have been placed upon us as distractions, trials, disruptions, confusion, and yet we as a collective, we as a family, we as a community stayed focused. Even with stress, hurt, pain, anger, we kept going, we stayed the course, we stayed dedicated, and we did it. Not alone either. We did it together, we did it with the help of each other, and I couldn't have done it without the inspiration of everyone at Bridge. So with that being said, it just tells you just how great this program is, how great this campus is, all the faculty, and everyone that walks those campus grounds. This place, this program, these people, my fellow classmates have given me hope, guidance, inspiration, love, and a new sense of humanity. For that, I'm ever so grateful, blessed, and I just wanna say thank you. And no matter where we all are going from here, it ain't over. Keep fighting until your victory is won. Thank you. 
It is my pleasure to read the names of the Bridge Class of 2020 who are participating in today's ceremony. Linda Michelle Collins. Brenda D. Cortez. Sharnice Crenshaw. Wednesday Dahlin. Maria Estrada. Carsevina Gates. Judy Noemi Guzman. Chesa May Harris. Joey Martin Huff. Theodore Patton. Allison Pratt. Joshua Rogers. Kamala Thompson. Maria Elba Michelle Wooden. Congratulations to the Bridge Class of 2020. Hello everyone. My name is Kirsten Grimstad and I am co-chair of the Division of Undergraduate Studies. It's my great pleasure to introduce this year's undergraduate commencement speaker, Noah Christensen. Noah Christensen has completed the undergraduate degree with a radiant record of achievement. In 2018, Noah received the Library Research Award for their paper, Selling Rainbows, Neoliberal Capitalism and Sexual Identity Formation. Noah's research experiment conducted with Kelsey Lutkins was selected for presentation at the Southern California Conference for Undergraduate Research. Noah served as a teaching assistant for the Bridge Program and in partnership with Brianna Fields, organized the Artistic Uprising, raising money and awareness for Bridge while celebrating the creative achievements of our AULA community. Most recently, the APA journal Training and Education in Professional Psychology published an article Noah co-authored with Theodore Burns that examines and imagines new social justice practices in clinical psychology education programs. Please welcome undergraduate commencement speaker, Noah Christensen. Good morning. My name is Noah Christensen. My pronouns are they, them. It is my great honor to speak with you this morning on behalf of the graduating class of the undergraduate studies program. Like many of my fellow graduates, I came to Antioch with a story I learned to tell myself about the kind of student I was. It was a story about failure, a story that I had failed at education and that an education was no longer viable for me. The undergraduate program has given me so much more than a college education. It has given me an opportunity to rewrite this story. This morning, I want to challenge our notions of failure. Jack Halberstam describes failure as a productive detour, a journey into unknown possibility as a kind of new beginning. He asks us to consider our conceptions of, con of success. How do we measure success in the world we live in today? By whose measure do we allow our lives to be valued and evaluated? Can any of us truly succeed if the stakes of winning must be at the expense of others. Around the country, we see the impact of the failures of our political, economic, and social legacies. A global pandemic undermines the safety and health of our most vulnerable communities. And in spite of this grave threat, millions have bravely taken to the streets across the country in protest of institutionalized white supremacy, demanding justice for black lives. We are living through one of the most turbulent and important moments in American history. This is not a moment to turn away, to shirk our responsibilities, or to despair. The education we've received has prepared us not just to witness this moment, but to understand it and to take action. In times of crisis, we look to our leaders to provide us with guidance and reassurance. Today, I look at my fellow graduates 
and I see a community of leaders engaged in meeting the challenges of the new world we march toward. I want to light a fire in your heart this morning. I want to reassure you, you are prepared to go out into this world as agents of change. This is our most important assignment, the calling of our education. We have the great privilege to examine the assumptions and stories we were born into, to challenge them, and to seek justice and equity for all who have and continue to be excluded from them. I proudly acknowledge the many achievements of my fellow graduates. This is a moment to both celebrate and to reaffirm our collective commitment to the values of this institution, to be champions of social, economic, and environmental justice. I look forward to witnessing the work of this graduating class, work that would be impossible without the generous stewardship of our faculty who have walked with us every step of this journey. Thank you for your mentorship. Thank you also to our families and loved ones. You've supported us on this path and we appreciate you so deeply. James Baldwin reminds us, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. Today, I proudly stand with my fellow graduates and face the future. I celebrate your stories and honor your brave commitment to claim your education. Take this moment in and remember that what you once thought was impossible is now proof that even when we fail, we are failing towards something magnificent. Congratulations to the class of 2020. It's my pleasure to be reading the names of the undergraduate class of 2020 who are participating in today's ceremony. Chris Aguilar Garcia. Rebecca Brandy. Carolina Caballero. Sandra M. Caesar. Noah Patrick Christensen. Tanya Cirelli, Tony Cornelison, Kelly Curran, Prince Eggway, Robin Eisenman, Brianna Marie Fields, Lindsay Force, Edwin Ramon. Gomez, Audrey Gordon, Natalie Guerra, Nikolai Hakim, Tova Harkam, Ruby Ibarra, Madeline Cannell, Cynthia King. Jen Marin, Alexander Emil Marshy, Will McGarry, Stacy J. Montgomery, Sierra Morris, Matthew Permoy, Olivia Schlichting, Alice Schoenquist. Sarah Schwartz, Lauren Smith, Kimberly Spaulding, Juan M. Zurita Jr. Congratulations to the undergraduate class of 2020. Hello, my name is Cynthia McDermott. As the chair of the Antioch University Los Angeles Education Department, it is my honor to introduce the 2020 Education Commencement Speaker, Marcella Luna. Marcella Luna is first generation Mexican American, the first in her family to receive a bachelor's degree, and today she becomes the first in her family to receive a master's degree. Marcella has been a teacher for 10 years and loves it more with every passing year. When not working, she rejuvenates by traveling the world. She was the first in her family to
to travel outside of North America and hopes to see more of the world soon. Please welcome our Class of 2020 Education Department speaker, Marcella Luna. Today, as I share my speech with the graduating Class of 2020, I must acknowledge how I wish we were all at Roy's Hall together, sharing this proud moment with our loved ones. This isn't how we imagined our ceremony to be like, but we are here and we made it. Like many of yours, my path hasn't always been clear. Most of the odds were against me. It's what makes moments like these all the sweeter. My parents migrated to the U.S. illegally in the late 70s, smuggled across the border in the trunk of a car and dumped by their coyote in a lettuce field. My mom was six months pregnant, rescued only because the coyote's conscience wouldn't let him forget the very pregnant woman he had left behind. My parents didn't even realize until after the fact that the lettuce field they had been left at for days was in the U.S. This is one of many stories I grew up with. This is the kind of story that molded me into the person I am today. My parents risked their lives for a dream, a dream of a better life. My parents didn't talk to me about college. They didn't know how, but they taught me to dream. I knew at a young age that I wanted to be a teacher. I didn't know how I would make this happen or even if I would, but I allowed myself to dream. As a kid, I yearned to have teachers who looked like me, who shared my background that could just somehow understand me. I didn't see this until college, and I knew then that who I wanted to be the most was who I needed as a kid. For a handful of years, I taught middle school, and I'll never forget the moment one of my Latino students heard me speak Spanish. He was shocked and told me he thought I was white. I hadn't realized, but many of my students had thought the same. They'd grown accustomed to white teachers, and although I have a natural tan and my last name is Luna, they couldn't imagine that I would be Latina. It was a learning moment for them and definitely for me. I learned the importance of diversity in schools, but most importantly, sharing our diversity with our students. Presently, I teach at Mance County Jail. I never even knew a job like mine existed. For over five years, I've taught at the place I never imagined myself teaching. It is here where I have grown the most as an educator, challenged in so many ways and humbled. Working with a population who needed better, who need better, pushed me to become better. The moment the idea of grad school worked its way into my heart, I searched and searched. Only one school felt right. After years of teaching in an unconventional environment, I had become the furthest away from a cookie cutter teacher and I needed a program that could support me and grow me as an educator and as a person. Antioch did this. The education department has created an environment where my classmates and I discussed difficult issues, shared personal stories, learned from one another, and above all, questioned our very purpose as educators. It is at Antioch that I learned that being a teacher is more than meeting standards. It's social justice. It's meeting our students' needs. It's a path of heart. It's not enough to be a teacher. It's not enough to teach the school adopted curriculum. It is our duty as educators to push ourselves outside of our comfort zones for the sake of students who depend on us, a future that depends on them. We can and we will. Congratulations, Class of 2020. It is my pleasure to be reading the names of the Education Department's Class of 2020 who are participating in today's ceremony. Mickey Bow, Charles Bolton. Amber Shante Brown, Juan Garcia, Jordan Grant, Sue Hamilton, Carla Hernandez, Wednesday Emma Hobson, Mia Honke, Janine Jackson, Nicole Java Harry, Janet Jefferson, Ryan Allen Johnson, Andreas Krumpel, Marcella Luna, Kyle Joseph Morrow, Jessica Moy, Elizabeth Rodriguez, Porsche Spencer, 
Wendy Velasquez. Caroline Walker. Erwin Darrell Woodard. Isaiah Taylor Young. Congratulations to the Education Department's Class of 2020. Greetings. My name is David Norgard, and I am the chair of the AULA Management Studies Department. It is my pleasure to introduce to you the 2020 commencement speaker for the department, Deborah Harada. Deborah has excelled in her studies throughout her time at Antioch. Alongside her degree, she has earned the Certified Nonprofit Professional Credential from the Nonprofit Leadership Alliance. She was accepted into the new Lambda Mu International Honor Society of the Nonprofit Academic Centers Council. Her studies have led directly to her forming the Three Stories Project, which helps women tell their stories, set goals, and lead in both the for-profit and nonprofit sectors. She started early in the nonprofit arena. At the age of 10, she organized her very first fundraiser, an event in her backyard for MS. Please welcome the Management Studies Department commencement speaker for the class of 2020, Deborah Harada. Hello, my name is Deborah Harada, and I'm so happy to be here today to represent the MA program in nonprofit management. First, I want to recognize everyone graduating. Congratulations, your hard work and perseverance have paid off. And then I want to give a special shout out to the combined cohorts graduating from the nonprofit management program. We did it. Congratulations. And I'd like to thank Dr. Norgard and the entire department for challenging, inspiring, and guiding us. But it is impossible to deliver this address and not talk about the huge events going on right now. Our place in the annals of history has been assured. But what does it mean? What does it mean to live through a pandemic and face global levels of uncertainty? What does it mean to witness thousands of people taking to the streets, raising their voices, and demanding an end to the unrelenting racism that has ended lives, thwarted dreams, and ruined communities? What does it mean? That is up to each of us. One of my biggest takeaways from my time at Antioch is that we each have a voice. We each have the ability to speak up and together we can move forward because we are all leaders. I'd like to share a couple points of inspiration from a well-known TED Talk. Nigerian writer Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie spoke of the danger of a single story. She says that we create the single story when we show a people as one thing over and over, and that is what they become. And we need to recognize that how stories are told, who tells them, when they are told, and how many times they are told is dependent on power. In order to avoid telling a single story here today, I surveyed both cohorts to share some of what we now recognize as strength in leadership. First, listening, because that should always be at the top of the list. Second, knowing oneself and using that awareness to lead and inspire others. And finally, living and leading with faith, purpose, and vision. I want to challenge each of us to embrace our power as leaders and let our voices ring out clear and resolute to tell the stories that must be told. Thank you. I am honored to read the names of the Management Study Department's Class of 2020 who are participating in today's ceremony. Justin Connolly. Deborah Harada. Jessica de la Riva Hernandez. Christine 
Alexis Posadas. Kimberly Sadler. Sharon Somoza. Nicholas Turton. Cheyenne Tatiana Elise Winston. Congratulations to the Management Studies Department Class of 2020. My name is Adonia Lugo and I am the Chair of the Urban Sustainability Department. It is with great pleasure that I introduce to you the commencement speaker for urban sustainability, Shayla Davis. Shayla Davis is a native of the DC metro area and a dual degree candidate for the USMA MFA program. She is the creator of the Crossroads podcast dedicated to issues of environmental and social justice in the US and abroad. She's a board member of the Tacoma Foundation and actively works on issues of mass incarceration and police brutality in Maryland. Shayla is a graduate of Spelman College with a degree in biology. Please welcome our urban sustainability speaker, Shayla Davis. Welcome professors, friends, family, and most importantly, the 2020 graduates of the Urban Sustainability Master's Program. My name is Shayla Davis, and it is an honor to give you words of encouragement, solidifying this moment as one of the many milestones in your present and future. The word milestone is used to mark a date with distinction. And as we have learned from our time at Antioch, a date of distinction is not always positive. They can be release dates from incarceration or pending eviction. We must expect the inevitable disappointment and frustration when a set date changes or only signifies the start of more time, more commitment and fortitude. The USMA principles teach us that leaders are built from the upliftment of the most vulnerable and marginalized. And you have made a promise to become leaders, true allies and mentors for future leaders. Our solutions to today's challenges lie in our inclusive community consciousness. Our solutions are not bound by time and must evolve to bring healing and equity for all. In my time in Antioch, I worked on mass incarceration and criminal justice reform issues in my home state. It was the summer of 2018 and Robert White, an unarmed black man, was shot and killed by a police officer. He was unarmed and on a walk around his neighborhood as he did every day. That stopped on July 11th. Robert's death triggered a movement in Maryland and it mirrors what we are seeing now on a national scale as many of us, our friends, neighbors, children have taken to the streets in protest. Before George Floyd or Robert White, there were many other deaths, some that have not made their way to the public stage. Before we set foot on Antioch's campus, there were people who loved the environment with our same passion. They fought for the Clean Air Act. They fought against the injustices at Love Canal, New York, Warren County, North Carolina, and Flint, Michigan. They toiled on as their milestone, their date of distinction, was obscured by big businesses and legislators. But today, their work is the foundation underneath our feet. Yes, we are mourning. The plans we made to celebrate this day have changed. We are pivoting in our future plans and careers. We are also bearing witness to inaction and ineptitude on every level but we must be resilient. It was this lesson that I relied on as the road to justice for Robert White went cold. The Antioch community taught me that a movement's progress did not depend solely on me. Regardless of your field of study, Antioch has taught us to be the creators of a more compassionate, more just world. So when those milestones change, when there is more work than celebration, remember the spark you felt when you first crafted your personal statement Think about that refund check that came right on time. Think about your community and find the strength to make the next step. At Spelman, we used a phrase, lean on the shield, to mean relying on fellow students when we needed help. I encourage you to do the same. Your cohort, alumnus, and fellow faculty are your support. They are your collaborators and co-conspirators. The challenges we are facing and those yet seen are not the burden of one, but are met, accepted, and overcome through community. Be encouraged. We are making history. Thank you and congratulations. I am pleased to read the names of the Urban Sustainability Department's Class of 2020 who are participating in today's ceremony. Shayla Davis. 
Franz Franta. Tanisha Marie Jones. Charles Loftland. Cecilia Martinez Hill. Lavella Thomas. Gregory Young. Congratulations to the Urban Sustainability Department's Class of 2020. At this time, I'd like to take a moment to recognize longtime psychology program chair, Dr. Joy Turek. Dr. Turek has been with Antioch University for f over 40 years and has worked tirelessly to advance students in the field of mental health. Dr. Turek will retire from her position at the end of June 2020. In recognition of Dr. Turek's years of service, Antioch University has awarded her the status of Professor Emerita, along with all the rights and privileges therein. And I'm going to read you a, a portion of the resolution from the Board of Governors, recently passed. Whereas Dr. Turek has made distinguished contributions to the discipline of psychology and to Antioch University as a professor, educational administrator, leader, and social activist, and whereas Dr. Turek is a pioneering thought contributor in understanding humor and psychology as a resource for promoting individual and societal healing and well-being. Whereas in the 1990s, Dr. Turek was instrumental in reviewing the Masters of Psychology curriculum as an initial step toward acknowledging racial, ethnocentric, and gender-centric biases in the general curriculum. And whereas Dr. Turek, as chair of the Masters of Psychology program, developed six specializations that would allow students to enhance their foundational education. Where, and whereas in 2006, she launched the nation's first LGBT specialization in clinical psychology, and eventually the nation's first LGBT affirmative clinic for LGBT youth. Whereas Dr. Turek has tirelessly organized the Antioch contingent of the APLA AIDS walk for the past 30 years, and whereas Dr. Turek uh, for over 15 years has served as the chair of the MA psychology program and helped to foster the doubling of size of that pr prosperous department. Now, therefore, be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the Chancellor of Antioch University and the Academic Affairs Committee, the Board of Governors affirms that Dr. Joy Turek is most deserving of the recognition of Professor Emerita of Antioch University and hereby bestows upon her the honorific title of Professor Emerita. Please join me in thanking Dr. Turek for her years of service with Antioch and with the MAP program. And now I'd also like to share with you a video that her colleagues put together for this particular occasion. Hi, Joy. Congratulations on your emeritus status. It's been such an honor and privilege to work with you. And I'm wishing you well wishes for your retirement and beyond. See you soon. Hi, Joy. You've been a consistent source of support for both me and students in Antioch. And I'm so very grateful for your patience and mentorship and guidance over the years. I'm going to miss having you as my next door office neighbor, but I wish you nothing but the next uh, best during this next stage in your journey. Hi, my dear Joy. You are my friend, my sister, my mentor, my partner in crime. I don't think I'd be in the place that I'm at in my life had I not known you. And I want to honor you for being a leader in the LGBT affirmative movement. And I don't think there'd be an LGBT specialization in all of the ways we touch so many people and emphasize the colors of the LGBT center and so much more. But if it not for your vision, your joy, your warmth, and your intelligence, I love you. Thank you so much. Hi, Joy, it's me. Uh, I really want to uh, thank you for your mentorship, your guidance, your support, and also your friendship over the five years that we've known each other. Somehow, I don't think that this will be the end. I don't know if you will actually be able to walk out those doors, but as you move on to this new chapter in your life, I wish you and Bob and Sarah and Matthew nothing but the best. Enjoy your time. Joy, uh, it's with sadness that I want to thank you for your humor, your compassion, your generosity. Your commitment uh, to Antrax mission has been exemplary. And I hope that you are really deeply nourished for all your years of generosity and generous service to Antrax mission. I love you. 
Joy, thank you for your service and for supporting me and finding my passions and supporting me and supporting students and finding their passions. Uh, it's been a great 15 years uh, serving with you and I hope you get some time to enjoy the ocean. Uh, Joy, thank you so much for bringing me uh, into the program as a coordinator and for having the opportunity to learn and work with you. Um, what you've done for this program and for this institution uh, extends beyond anything we could say in this short amount of time. And I just want to thank you for the ways that you stood up and led this community. Thinking about math without you um, is a very odd thing. So I think that we will hope to carry on in the spirit that you created for us to support our students, um, to support the mission of the institution, and to enhance the program in the ways that your vision and mentorship have created. I hope that in your next chapter, you find things that will fill your soul and your spirit and make you laugh, because I know humor is important to you. So be well, be safe, and I am sure that we will see you soon. Hi, Joy. I'd like to thank you for your leadership, your support. You've been there anytime I've ever needed anything from you. And the opportunity that you gave me by inviting me to create a cutting edge and innovative specialization in addiction and recovery. I'm really grateful for all that you've done for the math department over the years. And I wish you much joy and many exciting adventures in the years to come. Thank you. Dr. Joy Turek, this is Dr. Matt Silverstein, and I have been your student for over 25 years. So I think I'm starting to catch the curriculum. First of all, congratulations on your emeritus status. I'm so proud for you. And I just want to let you know that the main takeaway from your class, I mean, I've been a student of yours, I've been a colleague of yours, I've been a friend of yours, I feel like I'm also part of your family. And I'm just, I'm so touched to have had the experience of sharing life with you and also walking on the streets with you and carrying the mantle of social justice with you all of these years. And knowing that deep down in your heart, you are always siding with those who are the most vulnerable. And I've seen that in occasion after occasion. And even when that might put you in an unpopular position, you really fiercely protect those who need it most. Congratulations, Joy, and I love you. I think we all echo the same sentiment. And from Theo, who couldn't join us today, they wish you many years of happiness and peace and time away from Antioch. So for, from all of us, your faculty, we say thank you and we wish you well. Have fun, Joy. Miss you. Thanks, Miss Joy. Thank you. Love you. Congratulations and thank you for everything, Joy. I'd like to introduce the 2020 commencement speaker for psychology, Ali Babu J. Johnson. Many stories converge to inform a person's identities. Many legacies scaffold an individual's inner integrity. For Ali Babu J. Johnson, a brightly distinct stream of Marxist, black, and Jewish ancestors imbued this musician, social scientist, astrologer, clinical psychotherapist, and visionary activist with wonder and love for humanity. The Fame High School, University of Michigan, and the music industry informed Che's early career. Now, Che practices psychotherapy as an associate marriage and family therapist in LA. Che's motto, desire equals enlightenment. We are here because ancestors made it possible from everywhere and originally from Africa. We are here because the plants and animals sacrificed for us. We are here because our living family, friends, and loved ones rooted for us. We are here because even our adversaries spurred us on to be great. With aloha for all, I am here because of my living mother, Anne, and sister, Laura, and husband, Kevin. 
my ancestor Father Charles. I am here because of my friend mentors, Brad, Kirsten, and Marianne. I am here because of us, AULA graduates, my BSU crew, Jamila, Andrea, Neon, Neon, Tanisha, Tanya, and Eric. The Warrior Scholars, Miri, Masha, Aaron F., Lincoln, Catherine, Noah, Raphael, Aaron F., Danny, Zena, Jory, Grace, Michelle, Julie, Stephanie, and so many others. To administrators and professors, Mark Trotson and Sylvie Taylor, and so many others, thank you. Aloha. It took a worldwide pandemic to give us pause enough to use our 2020 vision to see the greater global pandemic of oppression typified by the police brutality and wanton murder of so many of our black folk, indigenous folk, and all people of color in this nation. This violence is emblematic of the dominant narrative that there is a divide between the good deserving wealthy and any bad disenfranchised person. If commencement ceremonies are rituals designed to bring us a felt sense of change, then we have to connect this graduation to the change we are all experiencing, awakening into a global consciousness repudiating this divide. We began in the toxic shadow of all the changes that COVID-19 brought. Shock, fear, disgust, and confused shame for not allowing and not following the shifting safety guidelines. And in that shadow, we were immobilized and bewildered. Manipulators seized this moment to sow further confusion as the top 25 billionaires looted $250 more billion from our tax-paying and consumer hands during this crisis. Visionary activist Caroline Casey reminds us that the toxic misrepresents life as an all or nothing split, making me bad, black, and you good, white, no matter what. And it isolates each of us in the process. But when the toxic is transformed to the tonic, we awaken, we experience belonging. We are in community, experiencing different things, but together. A knee on the neck of George Floyd woke us an etheric something happened in our bodies when we saw it, before we were too distracted to register a knee on the football field. The awakening is a moment of transformation. We trained at Antioch to foster this change from toxic to tonic in our clients. We hold space in therapy for trauma to be heard and healed in such moments. Such moments are what Antioch's mission statement is all about. Education to empower students and to advance social, economic, and environmental justice. This global commencement to awareness eclipses today's Antioch commencement, but it does not nullify it. Even as worldwide protests yield a cascade of change not seen in a lifetime, this school, this mission, this work we do can be right in sync with this moment. So we blissfully offer this commencement ceremony to remind us to keep on waking up. Keep on waking up. Challenge the parts of us that invest in toxic passivity and allow oppression in this school and in ourselves. Are you an ally or an accomplice? Allies are there until the short-term goal is met. Accomplices are ride or die to accomplish change. Keep on waking up. Embrace the dynamic struggle through losses and wins. Sometimes it's incremental, sometimes it's monumental. We can neither rest on our laurels nor be discouraged by defeats or partial victories. Keep on waking up. Community, even separated on these screens, we are connected by them. We are emboldened to contemplate the cacophony of multiple narratives. Just look at Seattle's autonomous zone. Minneapolis City Council's pledge to dismantle their police or the city of Camden, New Jersey's successful transformation of policing and the recent Supreme Court rulings, y'all. What used to? paralyze and anesthetize stops us to realize that what we idolize will yield no prize. With open eyes, we take to the streets and uprise. You can't ration compassion. You can't fake the funk. BLM is not fashion. Black lives are not junk. No more corporate sponsored parade charades. We march. Every iota of James Baldwin's pro poetry is prophecy prophesied while you lied to save yourself and lay still. Your silence is violence. Your contemplation of my humanity's reality belies your brutality but your listening is glistening. In its bareness, your awareness shows a care of fairness, opens the heart, there's a thereness there. When I saw that sign that a white woman held up, I understand that I don't understand, still I stand, then I knew that rational compassion will render racist fashion null, and now it's time to cash in all those good intentions and put them into action, y'all. This 
is our moment. In the absence of hugging on and dining with our family, friends, professors, and peers to celebrate this achievement, we have something that connects this social justice community to everyone and everything. We are all in a global commencement ritual right now. The collective awakening to stand whether or not we understand, to strive to understand our place in the matrix of personal privilege and systemic oppression, and to come out swinging for justice, equity in society, and the happiness of all humanity. Thank you. At this time, we will read the names of the Psychology Department's Class of 2020 who are participating in today's ceremony. Gina Ali. Florisita Arkari. Karen Ashkenazi. Brace Bacon. Cheryl Beck Benjamin. Hannah Rose Bernstein. Bianca Bersner. Camille Bien. Ashley Pauline Bullock. Tatiana Bustamante. Julia Bebet Campos. Viviana Caro. Sharon Jeet Chahal. Bronwyn Clark. Alexis Conrad. Melissa Coons. Cresta Dalrymple, Melissa Dellens, Courtney Dietler, Janine Doolin, Sabrina Dropkick, Reina Duran Hernandez, Jacqueline Eppinger, Chiara Etzel. Renee Fabian, Charmaine Furman, Cindy Filmadirosian, Christina Fitch, Heather Elise Fox, Lori Foy, Alexander Frankel, Melissa Gentry. Sepide Gedanian Jenna Brooke Goldman Thais Guimares Brian Hart Tom Henning Thomas Hensley Susie Herbert Rosella Hersey Julia Sayre Heim, Stephanie Holtz, Asher Hung, Judy Jason, Ali Babuche Johnson, Austin Jones, Jason Martin Karasev, Eric Michael Katende, Joe Kovakovich, Britt Kusserow, Laley Labuda, Alexandra Levenstrail, Jennifer Lewis, Jacqueline Lieber, Aaron Page Lipsy. Juan Andres Lujan, Tanya Maylander, Jenna Allen Marker, Yadira Martinez, Aaron Michael Mason, Kevin Matson, Ali Mon, Connor McCabe. Emily McCary Price, 
Christopher Meehan Carly Miola Carly Brand Mervis Chelsea Monty Kimberly Morgan Alan Mao Chelsea Norton Colleen O'Higgins Andrew Manabu Ogata Krista Renee Page Catherine Pancheri Casey J. Pearson Gottlieb Joseph Pickman Katie Peel Joshua Alexander Polk Melissa Ramirez Kat Recto Zena Rice Serantis Lily Robertson Carol Rodriguez Adrian Rusk Katya Rindinkova Andrew Sarver Marjorie Schutz Samantha Ann Schumann Emily Rebecca Sculthorpe Jordan Olivia Serwin Megan Sharkey Melody Shakui Rachel Silman Rachel Ann Skura Angele Nicole Smith Matthew Jacob Spector Ashley Renee Stevenson Andrew Strassner Vanessa Sutera Jenny Tannenbaum Casey Tazlitz Lauren Elaine Traits Laura Vasani Marissa Velasco Adania Sterling Walker Tanya Washington Nicole Webb Kyle Weisberg Lori Wheeler Carter Christian Wilkes Christina A. Wilkins Grace Willen Brittany Monet Williams Kira Wolfson Jennifer Yagubi Yadegar Connie Yang Tomer Zilberstein Congratulations to the Psychology Department's class of 2020. Hello everyone, my name is Victoria Chang and I'm the chair of the Creative Writing Department. I'm pleased to introduce the 2020 Creative Writing Commencement speaker, Mark Marquis Stallion. Mark was born in Chicago. In 2014, he entered the BFA acting program at the American Musical and Dramatic Academy in LA. While studying, he had the opportunity to direct and produce several of his own plays while also working in the industry. In 2017, Stallion enrolled at Antioch University, Culver City, where he is finishing his MFA program. Stallion is also an international youth mentor and motivational speaker. He's most proud of his wife and new son, Marquis. Please welcome the Creative Writing Program's 2020 commencement speaker, Mark Marquis Stallion. I would like to open by first thanking our honored guest, friends and family for being with us during a time when the idea of physical presence itself is threatened. I can assure you that your presence now means more than words can explain. I would like to follow by congratulating my fellow Cardinals. 
Unfortunately, the word congratulations doesn't satisfy the urge to hug and hold you close as we all say goodbye to our many residencies together. Together. It's a good way to describe Antioch, Los Angeles. A beautiful way to describe our experiences and an exquisite way to describe our collective voices. Together. It's what we've been, whether two, four, or 10, we have been the epitome of inclusive. I think that speaks volumes to the environment and culture that our wonderful faculty and staff have established for us here at Antioch University. Even during times such as this, when a global pandemic has warned us to halt all togetherness, we remain united. Together, we continue to listen to each other's voices, regardless of race, gender, opinion, or any other external matter. This is what creative writing is about. Inclusivity, breaking the ties to, the societal ties to marginalization. This is what we have done here at Antioch. Cardinals, we have created a space for others without a voice, without an outlet. Through our kindness, through our pain, through our many frustrating hours of trying to get those critical papers right, but more importantly, we've created conversations, all for togetherness. Cardinals, we have grown, expanded our minds, hearts, and our reach together. We've all experienced the undeniable power of community, Antioch's community, where residency is allowed for empathetic expansion and a more limpid view of our world. Together we write stories that answer questions for the broken and the hurting. Through our creative pen, together, we answer questions for the disenfranchised. Together we ask questions like, what is it when basic humanity cannot be preserved? Even better, we fight relentlessly to answer that. This is why I stand before you now to not just celebrate our individual accomplishments as writers, but to say thank you for being with each other on this journey. There's a divine quote that says, it's not about the journey, but who you travel with. Cardinals, Antioch, I am proud to have been on this journey together with you. It is my pleasure to read the names of the Creative Writing Department's Class of 2020 who are participating in today's ceremony. Lindsay Anthony Bacchioni. Amy Champeau. Lisa Croce. Sherry Danner. Alicia Escobedo. Ivan Onakame Itagane Barbara Fant Jerry Frederickson Malia Catherine Gaffney Christy Garvey Cecilia Martinez Heal Alicia Mercier Maya Nordine Rosana Perez. Janet Rodriguez. Lou Marie Yvette Rodriguez. Leonora Simonovis. Mark Marquis Stallion. Stephanie Teasley. Aliyah Lavon Teague. Christine Wolosik. Congratulations to the Creative Writing Department's Class of 2020. And now for that part of today's commencement ceremony that you have all been waiting for, the conferral of degrees. 
For this next portion of this virtual commencement ceremony, we shall cut to a live Zoom room where our graduates are waiting. Will the candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Master of Arts, and Master of Fine Arts please show yourselves? <laughs> Provost Hauer, on behalf of the faculty, I present to you for appropriate recognition the candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Master of Arts, and Master of Fine Arts. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of Antioch University, Los Angeles, and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors of Antioch University, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Master of Arts, and Master of Fine Arts, with all the rights, honors, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Graduates, you may now move your tassel from right to left. This ceremony is nearly over, but before we conclude, we have a tradition of providing a charge to all the new graduates. First graduates, welcome to the Antioch alumni community. You are automatically life members. We are strengthened by your addition to our community. As Antioch graduates, you are part of a long tradition, and I want to take a moment to recount part of that story because it seems relevant to the present historic moment. Antioch College was established in 1852 in Ohio during a particularly challenging time in our nation's history. The Civil War was less than a decade away and the country was deeply divided. The first president of Antioch College, Horace Mann, was a prominent abolitionist and a leader of the movement to establish public education. From the very beginning of the college, he enrolled white and black students who studied together, taught by both male and female faculty members. Mann recognized that the benefits of a society claiming to be a democracy must not be confined to a privileged elite at the expense of everyone else. This was the context when Mann delivered his famous challenge to students in the final commencement address, invoked at every Antioch graduation ceremony since 1859. Be ashamed to die until you've won some victory for humanity. Today we again find ourselves in an increasingly divided nation with so many of our systems and institutions failing. Our political processes seem to split rather than unite us. Racial injustice seems a scourge. Economic and social inequity is ever more entrenched. Our climate is damaged. Our health systems are unavailable to many of us. We see the challenges acutely in the coronavirus health crisis which has exacerbated and exposed so many inequities. Notably, the protests against racial injustice and the events preceding them have largely dominated the news landscape, even in the face of a deadly pandemic. The murder of George Floyd shocked the conscience of the nation. Yet, the killing of other black men and women, including Breonna Taylor and Rashard Brooks, accentuates a pattern of casual disregard for the lives of fellow human beings. In turn, it reveals the disturbing power of societal structures, institutions, and norms to perpetuate injustice and inequality. Coretta Scott King stated at an address at Georgia State University in February 2000, the greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members. Her statement reminds us that man's vision of a just, inclusive community and society remains painfully unfulfilled. As I reflect on this truth, I am moved to note we seem to be at a critical inflection point. It's been nearly 170 years since man established the college, and we still have so much work to do. But sometimes a moment opens up and change is possible. Perhaps that time is upon us. So I encourage you, each of you, and all of us 
to redouble our efforts for the lives of black men and women, the souls of our institution, and the ideal of a democratic society. Whatever your path as your journey continues, whether as a teacher, a therapist, a manager, a writer, a community activist, or something altogether different, I know you will find your authentic way to address the injustices, the inequities, and all that diminish us individually and divide us from each other. I ask that you continue to hone your critical and systemic thinking skills, to deepen your capacity for compassion and connection with others, to be an active and conscious agent of change. This is a lot to take on your shoulders, and please know you are not alone in this work. Together, we can create a community and a society and a world that works for all. I look forward to joining you in this important endeavor. Thank you all for participating in Antioch University of Los Angeles' 2020 virtual commencement ceremony. If you wish to stay on for a few minutes, you will be able to enjoy the slideshow of personal images submitted by our graduates. Congratulations, class of 2020.